Hi everyone, welcome to episode 47 of Anna Jodinets. Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel Anna Jodinets. My name is Annina. Uh, I come to you from Finland and this is my little podcast here on YouTube where I share all, all about my knitting and my designs. So welcome! In today's episode I have two finished objects and a couple of, a couple of works in progress that I want to share. And um, there is a tumble dryer <laughs> right i can hear it i hope you can't um it's never mind this is life uh, if you are new here you can find me also on instagram as anna Yuti knits and on ravelry as anna Yuti. let's start the show all right uh today i have two finished objects like i mentioned uh, but first, let's talk about what I'm wearing today. Um, this is my pankarti. It's still uh, in testing. So it's my pattern that is still in testing and it will be releasing very soon. Um, I was just actually going through through the feedback and there's still a little bit of time for, for the finished test knit and for the larger sizes, but I would say within two weeks you will have this pattern <laughs> pattern uh, out and uh, to to buy. Um, this is a design I made with Drops Bell. It is a t-shirt, boxy t-shirt with some garter uh, ridges on top and some shaping that makes this very uh, comfortable fit. And I have I have created <laughs> this T to 10 sizes and um, yeah it will be a very size inclusive summer pattern with a 21 stitch gauge which um, is rather fast to knit. Um, now that we are talking about this I am showing you the first finished object and it's another pankarti. This one is uh, size one. I made this for our 10 year old, my stepdaughter. And she is, um, this is quite big on her still. It has quite similar uh, ease than I have on, uh, on mine. I made the size five for myself, size six, sorry. I made the size six and I have quite uh, a generous amount of ease. So this fit is similar to her and this is also made in drops bell and i did use two colors because i really wanted to use stash yarn um if you've been here for a while you know that i am not uh purchasing yarn this first half year um this first half of the year and um so this these yarns were <laughs> out of my stash and actually, I think they work rather well. I, uh, I'm actually really pleased how, how the striping um, works with this tee. And I wouldn't change, change a thing. One thing I could mention is that I did change um, the color right before the short rows. There are some short row shaping on the shoulder. And it was really hard <laughs> to make them invisible when you change a color uh, on that row. So that was kind of kind of uh, tricky uh, while making it. But I really really like the way this looks, and uh, yeah, it's made it made according to the pattern, uh, except that the pattern doesn't describe uh, the yarn color changes, but. We all, as knitters, we can, we can uh, do this color blocking or striping on our own. So, so that's what that is. 
that was my first finished object last time that I showed showed it to you I think I was uh on the first I, I think I was just on the garter um I didn't even have I can't remember now either I had just joined in the round so uh after the 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 join here underarm or or I was just working on the top half but anyway it was <laughs> it was quite quick project when uh, I finally got the inspiration to tackle it so that's that's what that is my second finished object uh, is socks a pair of socks um, I did make a reel about these socks uh, to my Instagram but I um, originally had it a bit longer so I might just put the um, on this side, <laughs> I will put the video just rolling here uh, while I talk. And it shows how I did the cast on. I used the, the old Norwegian cast on, uh, which is a stretchy cast on method. And I did a tube with with the yarn. I had a 50 gram ball of, of this stripey yarn. I actually had two, but I was planning on using one of the balls to create the tube and then the second ball uh, I used for the toes and um, yeah as you can see I did <laughs> a cut in heel um, I did cut the tube in half I mimicked the the cuff so I made a long tube I started with a cuff I ended with a cuff so the other sock has the Jenny's surprisingly stretchy cast on cast off and the other one has the old Norwegian cast on. I think they look pretty similar and the stretch is is fine in both of them. So so that's that's what that is. And then a cut in heel. I did four rows or four rounds of stockinette before I did the heel because I always find the heels to be a little or it the this type of a heel being a bit tight uh, on the what's the part in English on top of your foot <laughs> the instep so um, yeah so I did four rounds just in, in stockinette and then I did did the basic afterthought heel and then actually I did fit I did the toes first and then I did the heel Unfortunately, I haven't really been using this technique a lot. I don't really do cut in heels because I don't think they fit my foot. And I measured wrong. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I'm not very experienced when it comes to this type of a heel. So I was aiming for size 38. Uh, these were supposed to go to my aunt but they are size 40 41 instead so they came out a little bit too big and i need to find other feet to <laughs> give these socks to so so that was a little, little unfortunate but um yeah i didn't love the the heel technique i do think that um working the heel as you go is is the best way to get a fitting sock but i did like making the tube so it was it was a fun fun project just to knit a long tube and all the rest i didn't really enjoy but but the tube part was fun um i think i will stick into my i think i will stick uh, with my heel flap and gusset or if I'm doing toe up, then a uh, flagel heel. Those are my two favorites, and I will stick with those. This yarn is uh, Schachenmeyer. What was it called? Fun stripes or something like that. Uh, I do still have. I just used um, a little bit from the other ball for the toes, so I do have like maybe 40 grams, 45 grams left. Uh, I could make a smaller pair for someone else. I didn't have, I actually I actually explained it last time that I didn't find any 
matching colors for my stash to make the heels and toes. Uh, I did dig my mom's scrappy basket and she had the perfect pink for for the heels and it was just so tiny tiny little ball that I just got got the heels done but I didn't have enough for the toes but that's fine um, I think they look fun and I'm sure I will find some feet <laughs> to give this to these two and those were my two and only finished objects for today and um, yeah I've actually been knitting I've actually been knitting quite a lot but I've been knitting on few items and some of them I've just worked on so little that I'm not going to show them to you because I don't think there's a point um, but I will quickly show you the shawl that I've been working on even though I've just made two repeats but I asked you for a name suggestion last time and I did find a name from, from, from your suggestions. So that's why I'm going to show it to you. Um, this is my Coastland shawl. Uh, it was called a shoreline, but I saw that there's so many shoreline projects um, on Ravelry and everywhere. So I decided to go with the name Coastland and thank you thank you my lovely viewer who suggested that it was it was very fitting and I like that so this is now the Coastland shawl and it is a triangular shawl you cast on from the long edge and then lace panel goes on the side here with this little shell-like motif and um, I had a progress keeper here so I've just made like two two uh, full pattern repeats um, but yeah I talked about this shawl last time quite a bit and if you are interested and you haven't seen it you can you can go in and see my previous episode this is a uh, linen quill the yarn it's linen quilt by Pearl Soho and it was a gift from a friend so it's been very very enjoyable to knit but I, I was not working on this very much I I have been working on something else in the last couple of weeks I think it's been two and a half maybe even three weeks ago since I last filmed but I've been quite busy with the pattern writing and um, life stuff. So here, here I am today. And today is the Wednesday 17th of May. And yeah, let's, let's move on with my other works in progress. The next project that I have... Um, shown you before is my ranunculus sweater this ranunculus is worked with uh, two strands held together I'm holding tun line and uh, a wool in it British wool so it's a very random random um, combination but yet again it was stash yarn and I'm really working working through my stash this year so I just wanted to use up the line and I paired it with the wool in it because that was something that I found fitted pretty well with the colors so I will have it. so I will um, show you a bit closer So it's this yellowish tone. Um, the tunline is a bit more peachy, but then the harvest yellow of the of the um, wool in it it brings a bit more yellow tones into this. Um, this project uh, <laughs> has been a tough one. It started out fast. Uh, I split for the sleeves within the next 
within the first maybe two or three days. But then uh, the sleeve has been a little more work. Um, I have already finished the sleeve twice. First, it was too loose and too short. And I didn't like the way it fit. And then I made it again. I ripped it out. I lengthened the sleeves by three centimeters and I made the ribbing the twist half twisted rib i did bind off and all and it was too sh uh, too long there is a neighbor playing a piano and it distracts it distracts me so much i'm <laughs> like i don't know like to talk to you or to listen to that i hope you don't listen i, I hope you can't hear it because i don't know it it really distracts me so anyway I ripped it out again and I decided to go for three quarter length sleeves because I think even though it has the summer yarn half of it but I think I will get more wear out of it if it's if it's a longer sleeve and the sleeve was still too long so I should have ripped out I think until like here maybe so I didn't feel like ripping it back that much so I decided to lengthen the sleeves um, last time I didn't have much of the body I think I, yes I have a progress creeper, progress keeper here so I've done a good 15 centimeters of the body and I've done the sleeve twice <laughs> so yeah um, I kind of lost steam with it I was bumped that I had to rip it out a couple of times but um, I really want to wear this sweater, so I think I will push push through it. And if I can manage uh, to make the sleeve the way that I envision it to be, I think I'm going to finish with uh, the eye cord that is suggested in the pattern so that it will create a little puff in the sleeve. And um, yeah, we'll see. I've been so into some so many other things that it's it's um I'm not in a hurry with that. <laughs> I've been working this morning uh on a computer. I've been doing the, the I've been fixing fixing the the pattern for the tankarti and I feel like I'm like out of focus. <laughs> it's a uh, it's a little hard to remain focused with with the the things that I'm talking about, but let's let's try um, if we can make this happen. All right, last time I showed you the amazing lock cabin blanket that I was working on. I am heavily modifying it. My stripes are a different width, and I am using scraps, so I'm using all the different colors. And this has grown a lot since you saw it last time. Whoop. So this is quite large already. I think it's like not quite a meter, maybe 80 to 90 centimeters long. And then I don't know, it's quite wide too. A little bit less white than it was so last time I had the middle part and I think I had started the did I or did I just have the middle part probably I don't remember um, anyway I've added these stripes I've added stripes to the top and to the bottom and then I started already to add more stripes to the long side and I'm using all kinds of scraps. I'm holding fingering weights double or or um, I have I have a little bit different different weights here all in all. I think I have this is a merino DK. Then I have merino extra fine. These two are merino extra fine. Um, so on a five millimeter needle, I think five point five five. It's a five millimeter. I'm a tight knitter, so that gives me the perfect gauge for 
for this blanket. I have put uh, quite a good amount of information to my Ravelry page. Uh, I have made a, sorry, I have made a project page and I've done all the stitch counts and I've also added the weights, uh, what each, each stripe needs. So I have, I have pretty good notes there. So if you are interested, you can interested, you can go and have a look at that. At the moment, I'm adding a cotton merino, and it feels a bit thinner than the rest of the things. But I think once it has something um, on the top and on the bottom, it will be fine. It's quite more airier gauge this blue stripe but I've been thoroughly enjoying this project it's so fun it is mindless it grows in front of your eyes you can see the progress and now it serves as a blanket because it's already quite big so while I'm working on it the weight of the garment not the garment the weight of the blanket um, is on my lap and not on the hands so it's quite quite nice to work with and um, yeah I look forward working on this even more because it has been so much fun so much fun to work on this uh, so the pattern I if I didn't read if I didn't already say it's a free pattern by Pearl Soho and um, I'm heavily modifying it to fit my needs so yeah I have made a little, I did show it last time, I don't even know where it is now, but I did make a little drawing um, to plan it out for myself and um, I did some measuring so that it would be become a, a good blanket size for my for my use. So yeah, that's that's a project that has gotten a lot of attention because it's been so it's been so wonderful. To work with. A next project that I would like to show you is something that has been hibernating since last September. So it's been <laughs> it's been tucked away for a long long time and if you follow me on Instagram you already have seen it because I posted a picture about it and uh, without further ado I will introduce my Swike sweater to you guys. So this is my Swike, Swike sweater. Uh, this is a true dream knit. So um, Inge from the Knitting Traditions is hosting a dream knit cow for this year. And first I thought that I have nothing, um, I don't have anything that would fit with the theme. But when I dug out this Swag sweater, I realized that this is exactly exactly what uh, I've been dreaming on making. So first of all, I have bought two uh, <laughs> sweaters quantities for this particular sweater already. Uh, the first one was a Merino single and I didn't quite find the good match for, for the lace and I bought the yarn, the first yarn already summer 21 and already then I had the spike sweater planned out but I ended up using that yarn for a couple of shawls, uh, one for my mom's shawl and uh, one for my own shawl. So. I have already used up all those yarns, but last fall or summer, no, I had bought the pattern in April. So I guess I had already purchased this yarn a year ago. <laughs> Fits with the theme. Um, so this is, this brown is a merino tweed from Ruskanlehti and the colorway is called Konjakki. And the brown, no, the, the gray one is is, the, is a similar base from Kettu Yarns. And this is the co um, colorway called Fog. 
and um, I had this leftover from my bio pullover last summer so when I had like 80 grams left I knew that I wanted to use it for something something nice and this is this is exactly that I have a progress keeper here and this is where I was left last September so I was like maybe seven rows in for the lace yoke and let me tell you it's a lot of work so much work you cannot imagine it is twisted stitches it's it's not, not a huge chart but you know maybe 10 14 stitches wide um lace work twisted stitches 3.5 millimeter needles uh the the chart was 35 rounds and i had markers between all the repeats and that worked out perfectly i wouldn't change it for a thing because that way i didn't make mistakes or if i did i already caught them on the next round and that didn't end up being an issue so I pulled this out because I really want to wear this sweater. When I was, um, I was organizing my sweaters. Um, I have to back up a little bit. <laughs> I told you last time that I got this beautiful cabinet or this yarn storage cabinet uh, for my grandmother's house. My parents were emptying my grandmother's house and there was this beautiful cupboard um that i got and i organized all my yarn into that not all but most of my yarn and i had a couple of shelves left and i wanted to put my sweaters in there too so i was taking out all my sweaters and i realized that the ones that i wear on a nearly daily basis are the fingering weight sweaters that i have and that inspired me to tackle on this project because I really want to wear this thing. It's a fingering weight sweater, it takes a long time, but I know for sure that this is something that I will love to wear. And look at it, it's just stunning. This lace work, it's so beautiful, I can't even. It's it is amazing. So I decided to work on this yoke. Um, last week I took it out I made progress maybe a couple of rows a night and I decided to work on it steadily every night and that way I will get through the yoke and so so I did last weekend I was watching the Eurovision <laughs> finals and um, I was just uh, I just finished the lace yoke and I did the color work while watching the Eurovision and I steam blocked it. I did put a picture on Instagram. I can put it here. And after I steam blocked it, I let it dry for for the next until the next day. And then I did join join the body and um, it's going to be it's going to be so fabulous. Now it's just smooth sailing. If you know the Swag sweater, it's from Boyland Knitworks, uh, Caitlin Hunter. It has these little cable details, but I decided because this is a tweed yarn, you have all these snips here. I think, no, I don't think, I know. I, I will omit all the cabling in the body. I just want to be, I just want this to be a mindless knit so that I can, so that I can, uh, just knit away <laughs> wherever I am uh, for this for this lovely 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 yarn so yeah this is not a new whip but it's a whip that you haven't seen in eight months or so so it has been hibernating quite a long time but now it really looks like I am going to finish this during this summer because it's a lot of stocking at knitting and it's a perfect, perfect um, uh, knit uh, to work on while you are with friends or, or whatever. So 
I am going to <laughs> hope for a good progress for, for this particular project. I'm a little bit off today. I don't know what's, what it is, uh, what's it, what's making me off. Um, I find I'm struggling with my words and I don't know, it feels strange, but I think we will just <laughs> keep moving. And, um, I just have one other project to show you some yarny acquisitions. Uh, even though I am not purchasing yarn, I still have a couple of sweater quantities and then I have a couple of questions to answer because I asked last night uh, on Instagram if someone would like to know something so that I can I can answer a few questions but the last project that I really wanted to show you are socks and this is a sock <laughs> It is, maybe I need a blocker. I don't know where my sock blocker is. Anyway. So these socks are, uh, it's a, I wouldn't say a pattern of mine or a design of mine. This was just something that I wanted to try out. And this is how it looks. So I had started a toe for these socks a while back. Maybe it was already a couple of months ago this year, but I had a different idea. I wanted to try out something that uh, then didn't work out. So I had this toe already done and I wanted to do something, something um, textural. I love I love to knit a textured sock because it kind of keeps the interest going. And um, I did, uh, I'm always creating my charge with Stitch Fiddle. So I opened my Stitch Fiddle. I, I uh, tried a few things and then um, this is what I decided to do. Uh, this is somewhat an interpretation of the mock cables uh, something that I've used in my socks before and I just didn't line them up I just alternated the way that you tie the cable and it creates this almost like scale like look and I think it looks fun I did a toe up sock with a French heel and heel flap and gusset. And I decided to continue with a little rib detail on the back of the sock. So it grows from, it grows from the heel flap and turns into a twisted rib detail. Yeah, so these socks are pretty far along. I'm just going to finish up the the leg and then make some cuff and and yeah it's just something that I've been trying out and I enjoy sock knitting a lot as you know uh, this colorway is uh, Cami Jo knit um, what is it called Cami Jo's favorite mug I think do I have the label here I don't is it here inside no I had the label, but I don't know where it is. Um, Camijo, uh, this is the Camijo sock, I think. I don't remember. Sorry, Camilla. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> this is a perfect mint green with the little, with the little uh, brown specks, and uh, it's just it reminds me of mint uh, chocolate mint ice cream, and that's my favorite. So. Um, it looks like chocolate mint ice cream, in my opinion. The lighting is a bit weird. It's very gloomy. Uh, it's been raining today a lot. Uh, we, we had a really weird uh, change of, of weather 
two weeks ago we still had snow and um, then then the weather weather shifted and we skipped spring altogether and it went straight into summer so we had like a 20 degree um change in in weather we went from snow to 20 degrees celsius and now it's something in between i think it's 15 degrees today and it's raining but that's good because the what's the word the pollen there has been so much like allergy problems in our in our family so it's it's very good that it rains and um all the leaves into the trees are coming at once so it's it's a it's a very bizarre <laughs> you uh, you go to bed it's all gray and you wake up and it's all green so it's very strange so the lighting is weird because it's gloomy outside <laughs> i'm really i'm really struggling today so those were all the projects that i wanted to show you i have more but i i haven't worked on them too much i have some, another pair of socks i have um the next scarf i showed you last time it has been living in my handbag and i've been working a row here and there at work so there's not a lot of progress with that so i didn't feel like taking it with me here but yeah um one or two couple of acquisitions uh one exciting new thing uh is going on to on <laughs> something exciting is going to be cast on and uh that something is to do with the yarn that i have here so first of all um maybe i should add gifted add gifted yarn <laughs> um as you've heard already a million times i'm working on the Tankarti, which is this one that I'm wearing, but I had an idea that summer is very short and the t-shirt the weather here in Finland is very not long. <laughs> so I really wanted to have a Tankar sweater and I talked about this with uh, a Finnish dyer duo called Säjevul. And this is yarn for a tankar, tankar sweater. So I am casting on a sweater version of, of this tankar tee. And um, I got this yarn uh, for this design. So it's, it, I didn't pay for it. I got it for free. And um, this is Sayewool BFL sock in the colorway Brilliant Mr. Fox. And this is how it looks knit up. It's a perfect, perfect burnt orange. Exactly the way that I love my oranges to be. And um, I got to choose the colors myself. And surprise, surprise. <laughs> I didn't went with, I didn't go with mustards because they don't have that sort of a mustard. But this brilliant Mr. Fox is something that I've been eyeing out for a long time already. I think I was already contemplating buying this last fall, uh, but I didn't. So this is a perfect, perfect um, color choice for my autumnal sweater. And it's going to be the Tankar sweater. So I did a little swatch. I love the colors and I just... First of all, I'm making it with a little bit different gauge. Um, I wanted to aim for 20 stitches rather than 21 so that it's a nice and airy or it's a nice, not too dense fabric to work on, work with because wool is lighter and it's not so drapey. So I wanted to add a bit drape with, with a tiny bit looser gauge. Uh, 20 stitch gauge is also um an easy gait uh if you want to use mohair and fingering weight together or you can use you can use pretty much whatever whatever your heart desires so it's a good good um gauge to work with like i said it's a bfl 
uh, sock. Uh, this is a new base for them and she suggested that I could uh, try this out if I'm interested and I really like I really like the way this feels. It's not scratchy at all. It's actually pretty soft and um, I believe this holds up pretty well being BFL. I don't think it's too pilly and it's uh, not as pilly at least as Merino can be. So yeah, this is something to um, look forward to. Uh, I didn't cast it on yet because I wanted to work on some stuff before. I really want to make sure that I'm working on the pattern for this and um, not getting ahead of myself with casting on another one without, uh, you know, staying focused with the one that I have on hand. And um, the release is so soon that I will I will hold off uh, casting this on until the Bankarti is out. And then I can put my all, all my energy into this, this project. Another acquisition is uh, some yarn that my mom brought me. Uh, my mom and dad went uh, for a little vacation to Turkey and she did bring me this summer yarn from Turkey. It says it's Fesa linen, linen, but actually it is a 70% cotton, 30% linen. Um, it is a sport weight, I think. And she bought a couple of balls for me enough for me to make a summer tea out of it. So this was this was a lovely, lovely little summer yarn. I actually don't have a lot of summer yarns. So now I have something, something uh, in my, in my yarn stash. Um, yeah, I think I can uh, <laughs> now wrap this up. The acquisition portion and we will head into the the questions that I got there's just a couple of questions that I would like to answer and um, I'll actually take I'll actually take my project so that I can knit while I'm at it um, I have to take those questions out and um, I forgot to bring something so the first question was, what is my favorite yarn composition and needle size and why? And uh, I've mentioned this before. <laughs> I will happily mention it again. My favorite yarn is 100% Finship wool yarn, uh, fingering weight. And um, it's a yarn that you can have with, or you can purchase that same composition that same yarn uh from different places because it's um all the mills here in finland i think create this yarn and here i have a couple of examples so this is yellow villa buona it's a single ply fin sheep wool rauni single this is karma yarns this uh unfortunately karma yarns has um stopped their yarn dyeing business so unfortunately this is no longer available i still have a couple of skeins skeins of this and then this is just something that i have gotten from my my uh, aunt's uh farm or the previous farm that my aunt had and this is their sheep wool and it's milled close to close to where they live so this is a uh, hundred percent finship wool single ply and this is something that i'm working on to become a pohjolan emanda sweater this is another very long-term project it's all wrinkly because it's been here sitting in the back for ages i really want to wear this sweater but i don't like the construction of it I really dislike working flat for a long time, although this sweater is worked flat, um, but it's worked from um, 
top down and you join under the underarms and then it's smooth sailing but i've been working and working and working for this <laughs> for so long that uh i don't know with a 3.5 millimeter needle it's just a slog working flat um i will finish it at some point but this is made with this wool and i just love the softness of it it's just so so nice so soft and um yeah i really i really want to wear this sweater but i can't bring myself working on it so but that's my favorite yarn uh needle size i really enjoy working fingering weight projects whether it's a sweater or socks but i think my comfort point is 3.5 millimeter needles and fingering weight yarn or four and uh, four point five millimeter needles with uh, merino dk or dk weight yarn whether it's merino or something else but i really love i really love a merino dk and um 4.5 millimeter needles so those two are are my favorite things to knit and i often um have i always have I always have a project with 3.5 millimeter needles because that's I think that's a size that doesn't really um, hurt my hands and it's it's a comfort comfortable um, needle size to work with so I would say 3.5. The next question that I had was can I please share share the yardages for Tankar Ki? So I have prepared a little um, a little. Um, slide for you to see so i will put it here on the screen and you can have have a look at all the yardages required for the tankar tea and um, you can start preparing your own own tankar project um, within two weeks it will be out and then then we can all make some uh, summer teas So the next question was that what yarns interest me the most at the moment and what do I plan to buy when the yarn buying ban is over? And that is an interesting question because I feel like since I stopped buying yarn, uh, I've been pretty, um, I've been really, pretty, uh into purchasing yarn especially last year i i think that i had so many plans i had so much high hopes for for knitting all the things and um i just didn't have the time to work on everything so i feel like i've been i've been connecting with my stash this this uh, first half of the year and it's been very eye-opening I I feel like last year I was trying to only purchase things that that are interesting to me are are lovely like I don't buy yarn for buying yarn I just buy beautiful inspiring things uh, so that I can pull out them and work on something amazing so that uh, the stash that I have at home is something that I can pull inspiration from and not just to buy yarn for, for the buying yarn, <laughs> for the sake of buying yarn. Um, something that I'm planning on buying from the yarn festival, uh, the Jyväskylä Knit Festival in um, Ju July, I am planning on trying out um, it's called Rasu Sorja, which is a um, yarn by Jalovilla. It is a lace weight, lace weight uh, finished wool yarn with with recycled nips. So it's sort of tweedy with the the recycled nips, but it's fin shape wool, which is which is something that I am really interested in. Uh, so that's something that I want to try, and. Um, I don't know. I'm not going to buy the whole world after <laughs> after this yarn buying ban. I feel like I am more um, 
I think I'm more mindful what I buy. I'm more uh, project oriented, if, if I can say so. I think I will just purchase something if I know what I'm going to make it make with it. So um, apart from the Rasu Soria, I believe that uh, I always there's always a market for a couple of beautiful skeins of hand dyed because I'm quite often making socks and I like to have beautiful sock yarns on hand so that I can I can uh, let my um, <laughs> creative juices flow and uh, pull from from my own stash when when uh, an idea for for socks emerges so I think those are definitely things that I'm, I'm planning on buying when I go to the Uvascula Knit Festival and um, yeah one more question and then we are done for the day uh, was that do you have any favorite summery knits and uh, I do have one <laughs> I do have one actually I have two um, I believe for this summer my favorite knit will be this because I just love it. Uh, it's very comfortable on. I, I'm super happy that my vision came through and this Tankarti became just what I wanted. Uh, so I believe this will be a favorite for this summer. But I also have one um, from last summer. I did finish it already um in the springtime last year and that is my um what's the name for it plant lady tea and uh, plant lady plant lady tea is by um i can't remember <laughs> i'm well prepared uh i will put it here um yeah I was wearing that a ton. I made mine in pure silk from uh, Knitting for Olive. And that yarn is just so nice on a summer top. It is a fingering weight, loose gauge and perfect summer garments. I feel like it didn't peel even though I was wearing it a lot last summer. First of all, the color, sunflower yellow, amazing. And... Um, I just I just loved wearing it. It's I made it cropped, very cropped. I was wearing it with a high waisted skirt and um it was something that I wore a lot last summer. So that is a summer favorite of mine definitely. All right. This was quite jam packed um jam packed episode i hope you enjoyed it if you did enjoy this episode please uh, leave me comments or subscribe like do all the things uh, it always helps the channel to grow and i'm really really appreciative of you uh, taking the time and watching my videos so thank you for being there and i will see you next time bye